Hello, Namaskar and a very good afternoon to all the viewers watching our sessions out there. This is Simran Singh and you are all watching this particular live telecast of NCRT on eVidya channel number 9. Besides, we have so many different mediums through which you all can connect with us and you can also participate in our live sessions by raising your queries, your questions, your doubts and your comments in the feedback session of NCRT official that is the comment section. So viewers for another half an hour we have a session of science, social science for all class 9 students and the topic that we are going to discuss today is chapter number 2 the physical features of India. Viewers from any other classes if you have connected with us and if you have any of the doubts, any queries you would like to ask us, then do mention it in the comment section of NCRT official that would be our YouTube channel. I will also introduce you to the guest for today's session but before that an important piece of information regarding G20 for all of you. We are proud of the fact that India assumed the G20 presidency and will convene the G20 leader summit for the first time in the country in this year. That's 2023. The nation is deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism. India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play a very important role by finding global pragmatic solutions for the well-being of everyone and in doing so, manifesting the true spirit of Vasudhav Kutumbakam or should I say the world is one family. Uh, let me also introduce you to the guest for the session. We are joined by Mr. Pushpendra Singh, sir, in the studio. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar, man. Thank you so Good much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, sir is academic head for classes 11th and 12th, serving at Prudent School, Ashok Vihar, New Delhi. So, viewers, without further ado, let's begin our conversation and let's get to know more from sir. What are we going to discuss today? Thank you so much, ma'am. So today we are going to do uh, physical features of India chapter number two in grade uh, ninth. Basically, uh, this chapter uh, deals with the geological features like uh, mountains, plains, plateaus, uh, coastal plains. So we are going to do this. So basically, uh, India has been divided into six physiographic divisions. That is Himalayas, Northern Plains, the Peninsular Plateau, the Indian Coastal Desert and uh, coastal plains and uh, the island groups so uh, and sir with that we would also like to know what are the different uh, physiographic condition uh, divisions of india so uh, ma'am the basic uh, divisions are six that is the himalayas the northern plains the peninsular plateau the indian desert the coastal plains and island groups so these are six basic divisions and sir, also uh, in this chapter, do we need to know something about the plate tectonic in order to understand the present location of India and of course its physical features? Absolutely ma'am, we need to understand before this that why India came here and how India came here. So plate tectonic theory, this is a theory which basically deals with how the plates movement of plate takes place. As we know that there are different types of plates, convergent plates, divergent plates and transform bound plate boundaries are there. So what happens? India, once upon a time, it was not a part of a present uh, situation. If we see in this map, so Gondwana land, India was part of a Gondwana land. And here you will be able to see that approximately 175 million years ago, there was a supercontinent which was known as Pangaea. And in this Pangaea, it had two parts. The upper part was known as Laurasia, whereas the southern part was known as the Gondwana land. So what happened? Approximately 175 million years ago, it started breaking. And because of this breaking, what happened? India started its journey. As you can see in this presentation, that India is moving towards north and east. So what happens? India travels from here and it collides with the Eurasian plate where presently we are located because of this collision. Earlier there used to be a, a geosyncline here and this geosyncline was known as Teth Sea and here the sediments brought by the river which we say uh, that is a Indo-Brahma river was there. So what happened? These sediments got uplift, uh, uplifted and folded and led to the formation of Himalayas. It, during this journey also how the plateau was formed. So all these things happen only during this journey. So if we see here in this presentation, you see that how India is moving towards 
north and northeast and when it collides it creates to the formation of himalayas so so this indian subcontinent if we talk uh, about so a part of gondwana land broke off and collided with the eurasia so the himalayas and hindu kush were formed this indian plate here the journey has been shown and if you are able to see you will be able to find out that 55 million years ago where india was and 10 million years ago then suddenly we find that present india is has been formed and these are different plates so eurasian plate was that big plate uh, with which indian plate collided so if we talk about so this formation and this collision led to the formation of himalayas and these himalayas are young fold mountains which have been recently formed if i talk about the geological history of india so uh, means uh, not only india across the globe hardly uh, these himalayas have been formed uh, 4 million years ago or you can say 70 million years ago it is started and still himalayas are growing their length is 2500 kilometers from west to east and these uh, they act as a physical barrier they uh, separate if we say that uh, they separate india from china and the rest of the world this provides them a unique uh, location which is known as indian subcontinent and they also protect us from the cold waves coming from the northeast uh, from eurasia and uh, this leads to uh, avoid that we are not a cold desert so all such things this has happened of course sir and uh, having discussed about himalayas we would also like to know about its uh, formation historically uh, yes ma'am uh, there are actually different divisions of himalayas if we talk about so uh, if we talk about the himalayas so these can be like kashmir or northwestern himalayas are there so these himalayas consist karakoram range ladakh range and jaskar range basically siachen glacier baltoro glaciers are located here and one of the most famous formations are karevas which are found here and main rivers here are like indus shalem chenab bias ravi all such rivers are found then second uh, division is Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand Himalayas. So uh, these Himalayas here, Indus, Ganga uh, tributaries are there. And basically, Ravi, Bias, Satluj come here. Yamna, Ghaghar river are also there. Then we come to the Darjeeling Himalayas, basically northeast. And if we are leaving Nepal Himalayas, which are part of Nepal, so we are talking about India. So here, so uh, Darjeeling and Sikkim Himalayas are also there. Then we talk about Arunachal Himalayas, those are located in Arunachal Pradesh and Namcha Barwa, the one of the highest peak, uh, it is found there and uh, here all the rivers like Brahmaputra, they come in India and uh, the last part is Eastern Hill Complex. So this is basically uh, Patkaibam, Naga Hills, so these all are part of Himalayas here, Himalayas has taken a bend and entered towards the south. So these were the things which we have discussed. Now what happens we talk about that India just traveled and it reached here. So I just said that uh, during this travel or transition here once upon a time there was a geosyncline and when India collided with it what happened this led to the formation of uh, this uh, closing of this geosyncline and what happens because of the closing of this geosyncline so the rivers which were coming from the mountains because of himalayas so they brought the sediments and these sediments were deposited in this geosyncline and later on leading to that this geosyncline was closed and present north indian mountain uh, plains were formed and these Plains are very long and elongated one if I say they begin from the uh, Punjab and they will go till Assam. So these uh, uh, plains have been formed by different rivers. I so, think this was your next question you were supposed to ask. Yes, uh, which were the rivers that were involved in the formation yes. of uh, Northern Indian Plains. Absolutely. So this led to the uh, asking that which were those rivers which led to the formation of such a great vast land, which is a plain, North Indian plain. So if I say, so mainly here the Indus River system, 
then Ganga river system and Brahmaputra river system. These three river systems led to the formation of these northern plains. And if you say these northern plains are really big and vast land and they provide, they are known as the granary of India because we find several types of uh, food crops grown here and we are dependent on these. So, Ganga, Brahmaputra and these tributaries and further we can just classify or we can just divide these parts. For example, any river if it is coming from, let's stay, say Ganga is coming down. So, Ganga will be further divided into Bhabar, Taraik, Bhangar and Khadar. So, all these four parts are there. When we talk about the Bhabar, Bhabar is the upper belt from where uh, river enters into plains. As soon as it enters into plains, what happens? The big boulders which have been brought by this river, they are deposited here. And once they are deposited, so what happens? Here, river disappears during summer because water is less. Whereas, when we talk about the Tarai, here river re-emerges from the Bhabhar. And what happens? Because of this, this is one of the areas where water is uh, too much and these watery areas are known as Tarai. These are rich for forest. If we see, so forest areas are there and these are known for sugarcane cultivation. If we see like uh, Merat, Rampur and uh, all these districts, they come under the Tarai. Then we talk about the Bhangar and Khada. Bhangar is made up of the older alluvium, basically calcareous woods are there from which it has been formed. Whereas if we talk about the Khadar, so we talk about the Khadar, this is new alluvium and this is much more fertile uh, than the Bhangar. Hmm. So these were uh, say old alluvium and new alluvium. Now, Uh, viewers in the conversation, okay. uh, we still have 10 minutes left. So if you have any of your queries, anything you would like to ask us, then do mention it in the comment section of NCRT official. Either you may give us a call at 8800-440-559 or our specific mail ID for class 9 students is dth.class9 at the rate ciet.nic.in. Yes, sir. Okay. So, ma'am, uh, basically now we come to the next physical division of India that is Peninsular Plateau. And when we talk about the Peninsular Plateau, we need to understand that Peninsular Plateau was, it is a big landmass which has come from the Gondwana land and it was not here. So, when it was coming at the time of journey approximately 50-55 million years ago, so what happened? There was a hot spot in Indian Ocean and over the hot spot, uh, such type of uh, volcanic material and magma came out because of which this entire, uh, we say, the peninsular plateau was formed. So here, this uh, vo uh, volcanic material, it creates a mineral hub. We are able to see that most of the minerals of India are found here. So if we say its situation in the northern plains, near the northern plains, down, and then it goes to Kanyakumari also, Chhota Nagpur Plateau, Bundelkhand, there are, these are different parts. So its height ranges from nine, uh, 600 to 900 meters. And if we talk about, it has further been divided. Narmada and Tapi River, what happened when India collided with the Eurasian plate? So Indian plate being heavy, it just submerged beneath the uh, Eurasian plate. And because of this submergence, what happened? Uh, Indian plate just got uplifted and the plate was so heavy that it just broke down. Because of breaking down of this plate, what happened? The rift valley was formed from where today we find that two rivers flow. These are Narmada and Tapi. And remember, these are the only two major rivers which flow from east towards west and drain into the Arabian Sea. So, if we see, and this uh, area, because it has been formed by magma, so what happens, we find that this magma has led to the formation of black soil also. And black soil, as you know, it is very rich in nutrients and that's why it is very much known for the cotton soil or even for sugarcane cultivation, it is really a wonderful soil. So, if we uh, talk about Peninsular Plateau, it has further been divided into the Deccan Plateau, the Central Highland and North Eastern Plateau. 
So uh, Deccan Plateau basically it is bordered by Western Ghats in the west and Eastern Ghat in the east, Vindhyas and Satpura range in the north. So if, uh, Nilgiri Hills in Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Andamalai in Kerala, all these areas come under these uh, Deccan Plateau. Whereas if we talk about Eastern Ghats, so Saint, uh, Eastern uh, Plateau, it is in the northeast uh, part extension and peninsular plateau. If we see Meghalaya Plateau is divided into two parts, which is known as Garo Hills and Khasi Hills and Jantia Hills. So these are different uh, blocks in northeastern plateau. Whereas the central highlands, it is bordered by on the top, it has uh, Aravali Range, Satpura Range in the uh, north and Chota Nagpur Plateau in the south. So this is example of relict mountain eroded by the wind. Its elevation is 700 to 1000 meter above the sea level with its slope towards the northeast direction. Now if we see, so uh, here also we are able to see that Vindhyan range are there, then Malwa plateau is there, Satpura range are there. So these entire part is the southern part which we are able to see. This is about the plateau, Deccan plateau. Now we come to the next physiographic feature which is the Indian desert which is also known as the Thar desert. So this is located basically uh, on the western part of India in the state of Rajasthan and some part of Gujarat and then extension uh, has been there in uh, some uh, we say Haryana and Punjab also. So this receives a very low rainfall say 150 millimeter per year and it is because of this this has arid climate. And this is known as Marusthali in Hindi. And in Hindi when we say Marusthali that means Marusthal. Maru means desert. So uh, here one of the major river is Loni but this is a seasonal river. And uh, we uh, say that it is ephemeral drainage which uh, does not uh, run throughout the year. Water is not found. Only during the rainy season the water is found. And it uh, does not reach to the ocean. It just in the run of Kutch just disappears there. So high evaporation rate is there, low rainfall, it makes it lacking in the water lacking region. So due to this, this water turns into brackish and the main source of obtaining salt, Sambhar Lake like we have mm. from where we obtain uh, all the such type of salt and these things. Then the next physiographic division is coastal plains. And when we talk about the coastal plains, so in India, we are able to see that we have on the eastern coast and western coast, coastal plains are found. So basically, these western and eastern coastal plains, they are very rich for our agriculture purpose. So uh, western coastal plains are example of submerged coastal plains, whereas the eastern coastal plains are example of an emergent coast. So Kandla, Mazgaon, Jawaharlal Nehru port, Navasheva, Marmagao, such type of big ports are located on our in our western coastal plains. Whereas on eastern coastal plains, if we see, it include like Mahanadi River, Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, they make the delta in these regions. Then uh, if you see the coastal uh, areas have further been divided, we can say that the, uh, there is Konkan coast, then we have Malabar coast, in the Kerala, whereas on the eastern side we have Koromandal coast and northern Sarkars are there. So all these are the subdivisions of these coastal plains in the north and uh, in the east and western coastal plains. Then we come to the island groups. So India is comprised of the island groups and basically if we say there are two island groups on the eastern side we have Andaman and Nicobar island group whereas which is located in Bay of Bengal, whereas we have Lakshadweep Island group on the west, uh, western coast in the Arabian Sea. And if we talk about uh, these uh, uh, island groups, like uh, we say Andaman Nicobar Island, they have been formed by the submerged mountains. Whereas if we talk about in the Arabian Sea, Lakshadweep Island group, they have been formed by some atolls and all these. Uh, coral uh, polyps they have mm. been formed. So these are the different physiographic divisions which are found basically in India and uh, we need to understand that uh, further to understand this we need to go thoroughly with the NCRT which is one of the most important component when we are reading this, these chapters. 
And so with regard to that, I have a very small question, if you allow. Yes. So as our viewers are the students who are watching the session and also they will be studying it in their textbooks. So we see that there's a lot of comparisons uh, being made between the eastern coastal plains and the western coastal plains. So sometimes what happens is students get confused. So I would like to ask you, what is the best way to differentiate them and also to understand it point, -wise, point wise and also without getting confused at all? Okay, absolutely. So, what we can uh, do, once again, I'll just come here, Eastern Coastal Plains and Western Coastal Plains. So, we need to understand that Eastern Coastal Plains are located in the eastern part near the Bay of Bengal. Hmm. So, we need not to be confused. What happens? Most of the time, students get confused because of east and west, and west. direction. Hmm. So, whereas when we talk about the Western Coastal Plains, they are found along the coastal areas of the west, say, towards Mumbai side hmm. and these are found near Arabian Sea that is the most important part we need to understand about that and you can see here I have just made mentioned it hmm. so that easily you can understand where they are situated also and I assume that it will be very helpful to all the viewers watching the program. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for connecting with us on the conversation. So much, uh, we would have loved to continue the session, but due to paucity of time, I'll have to wrap it up here itself. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to all the viewers for connecting with NCRT in this particular session of social science. And before concluding my words, I have an important piece of information regarding availability of NCRT textbooks. So, viewers, NCRT textbooks for the academic year 2023 to 2024 are available all across the country. The textbooks may be purchased directly from the sales counters that are located in New Delhi, Guwahati, Bangalore, Kolkata and Ahmedabad. The sales counters will be functional on all the weekdays, also on gazetted holidays, Saturdays and Sundays and the timings would be 9.30 am in the morning till 6 pm in the evenings. So, you all may place an order online for these NCRT textbooks through the website link which is flashing on your screens. It is ncertbooks.ncert.gov.in and you will be able to receive all the books that you placed an order for at your doorstep with no extra charges. Also, if you would like to download the soft copy or the PDF version of the textbooks, then you may always do it from NCRT, Diksha, Ipat Shala website and also from our mobile application. In order to explore more or know more about the authorized vendors, we have our website of NCRT that is www.ncert.nic.in. Once again, thanking all of you for connecting with, uh, with us. Uh, keep watching Evidya channels and we'll be right back with another session in few minutes. Namaskar.